Hi, I'm Jim and thanks for watching this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to access your Ugreen NAS remotely. And there's various ways of doing this. For example, you could set up a WireGuard connection, you could use Tailscale, or in this case, in this video, we're going to be using the official Ugreen NAS way of accessing the Ugreen NAS remotely. So, let me take you onto the computer behind me here and I'll show you how to set it up. So let's get started. So here we are at the computer screen and the first thing you need to do is head over to web.ugnas.com and you will be presented with this login page. Ugreen NAS Next Level Storage Limitless Possibilities and it will ask you to log in with your phone number or email address and password. Now, if you haven't already set up a cloud Ugreen NAS account on the web.ugnas.com website, then what you will need to do is click on the register now button in this window here, create an email address, password, confirm your password, and then you'll be sent to your email address a verification code. So you'll need to enter the verification code, tick the box to I have read and accept user agreement. So then once you've done that, you will click register. And then in future, all you'll need to do is go back to the web.ugnas.com website, enter your phone number or email address. So what I'll do is enter my email address that I registered previously and then enter the password, agree to the user agreement and this will take you in to your Ugreen NAS cloud account. So you'll see we've got user there, you can actually edit the picture if you want by clicking on it and then entering your icon there that you want to use or upload. It will then give you the email address and the user. You can also change the username by clicking the pen icon for example, let's call this test, click the pen icon and there we go, it's changed our username to test. Now you'll also get options here for account and security. So it will reveal your email address and also you can change the password. And if you want security, you can log in device management, account activity logs and you can also delete the account. And there's also a technical support ticket if you want to raise a ticket for anything associated with your Ugreen NAS. So as you'll see with the Ugreen NAS device selected in the menu here, there's no device actually linked into this account. So what we need to do is go back into another tab, for example, this one here, where I've already logged in locally to my Ugreen NAS. So this is the local access on my network. And to set it up and link it to the cloud account here, we need to go into the control panel. So open up control panel. And just a reminder that you need to be logged in as an administrator to do this. And then once you're in the control panel, you need to select device connection. And then with the device connection window open, you'll see it's taken us into the LAN tab here. So what you need to do is go into the remote access tab so click this and then you will see we've got mode one and mode two. Now you can, of course, if you have a dynamic DNS option. So if you have a dynamic DNS account, you can actually link it into this mode two option here. However, in this video, we're going to be using the official one, as I said in the intro. So in mode one, what we need to do is tick the box for Ugreen link remote access. Then you will see we get the enable notifications. To enable remote access, please log in and verify Ugreen cloud account. So click OK. And then you will get this pop up window appeared Ugreen cloud account. And it's given us an option to password login or SMS login. So what we need to do to link the Ugreen NAS to our cloud account that we previously created here in this tab. So at web.ugnas.com, we need to link it to our Ugreen NAS. So we'll go back to the other tab and in the Ugreen cloud account, we need to enter our email address that we previously created the cloud account for and the password and then tick the box for 
read and accept user service agreement and privacy policy. And then what you need to do is click on verify and bind. This will then verify and bind your Ugreen NAS to your cloud account. Now that we've ticked that box, entered our username and password to link it to the cloud account, you will see we've got a box revealed for Ugreen link ID. Now, as I've previously already tested this, I've already got a link ID in there of 496 treble 8. Now, what you need to do is enter a unique number or characters and numbers in there so that you can access your Ugreen NAS cloud account with these numbers. So in this case, for this test, I've entered 496 treble 8. However, you need to put a unique set of characters or numbers or both in there. So once you've done that, you can then click apply and it will tell you if the link ID has already been used for somebody else. If it has, then you'll need just need to change it and create another one. So that completes linking our Ugreen NAS locally to our cloud account. So now that we've done that, we can then exit and log out of our Ugreen NAS locally, close the tab, and then we're back to the other tab where we created the cloud account. So if we refresh the page, you will now see that we've got Ugreen NAS device. So the device has now appeared, which confirms it's linked directly from the local account to the cloud account. So now that we've done that, we can now access our Ugreen NAS remotely. So what we'll do is just log out of the cloud account here by clicking the log out button in the top right corner and then confirm logging out by clicking OK. So now one thing I would recommend doing is if we go back to our local NAS, so accessing it locally as we would on our network, entering our username and password, what I would recommend doing is enabling two-factor authentication on your NAS. So to do this, you need to go to the top right corner, select the me icon, so that's the little person icon, then click on the username, and then with the pop-up window that appears, go into account security, and you'll see there's an option for two-factor authentication. Now, I would recommend enabling this as you're accessing it from the cloud. It just enhances security with two-factor authentication enabled on the accounts for your users. So I would recommend doing this. However, just for this test, I haven't actually enabled it, but I will be doing later on when I fully set up my cloud account so I can access the NAS remotely, I will be enabling two-factor authentication. So for this purpose, I'll just leave it disabled for the time being. I would also recommend creating a separate user account to access the NAS remotely with. So instead of logging in with your administrator account, I would recommend just creating a standard user account which you just use to access it remotely. And that way you get all the logs for that user account so that you can see the activity. And if any problems arise, you've got a log of activity for that remote user. So to create another user, in this case, the remote user, we're going into control panel and we're going to select user management. Then in user management, you'll see that I've got three accounts in there, myself, Tim, and then one for the scanner. So the scanner scans documents remotely and saves them onto the Ugreen NAS. So that's what that account is for. And I've also got the share account. Now the share account is for the SMB. So if you want to map a network drive in Windows to your Ugreen NAS, you can do. And I have actually created a video about how to do this. So if you have a look on my YouTube channel, there's a video there recently in the last month telling you how to and showing you how to map a network drive in Windows. So that's what that user account is used for. So in this case, we'll go to add, then create, then in the username, for example, we'll call this remote. So we'll use this remote user account to log in remotely when we want to do so. So in the password, again, create a secure password as you can, confirm the password. If you want, you can enter the email address and a description. And then in the role option, make sure that you select common user and not administrator. So if you want to access your files remotely, 
by the cloud on your Ugreen NAS, then make sure that you select common user. But if you do want to have administrator access so that you can create users and do other various tasks on your Ugreen NAS remotely, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but if you want to, you can, and you would select the administrator option. In this case, we're just creating a remote user that will be able to access files. So we'll select common user. In the user group, we can leave that blank. And then scrolling down, you will see that we've got two options. Enable personal folder. Now I don't use personal folders, but if you do, then tick that box. And then we've got the other option, which is this user is not allowed to change the password. Whether you want to choose that option or not is up to you. So if you want to allow the users to change their own password, you can. If you don't want them to allow them to change the password, then tick that box. In this case, we'll just click next. And then it's asking us to create the permissions for the folders on the NAS. Now here is where you select the folders that you want to allow to be accessed remotely. So in this case, I'll be selecting just the music folder. So for this, we need to tick the read and write option for music. And you'll see that the action permission has now changed to read and write. Now you'll see that the others for data, media and video have all got access denied. So they will not be allowed to be accessed remotely using the remote account that we're creating. So once you've chosen the permissions for the various folders that you want to access remotely or don't want to access, you then click done. Now you'll see that we've created a user account called remote. So now that we've done that, we can then log out of the NAS on the local network. And then if I bring up, for example, my mobile phone, and then you'll see that I've got the Ugreen NAS application installed. Now, if you're accessing your devices remotely, via an Android or Apple device, I would recommend that you download the Ugreen NAS application from your usual app store. Once you've downloaded the app, click on it to open it, and then it will say local account login. So just before I do this, I'll just make sure that I'm not on the Wi-Fi for the local network and we're on mobile data, which is we are now. So I've selected mobile data just to confirm that this works remotely. So this is now using the 5G mobile network and in the local account login, you will see that we've got that number that we created in the Ugreen NAS link ID. So if you recall, it was 496-888. So all you need to do is enter your ID. So whether that be, for example, characters and numbers or just the numbers. So in this case, I created 496-888. Then in the next box, you'll see that we've got the username in there. So we've got the username of remote, which is for the account that we've just created locally on the NAS. So if you remember, we gave it permissions to access the music folder. So then what we need to do is enter the password for the remote account that we've just created. And then all you need to do is click login and it will connect to your device. And here you'll see we've now got the NAS appeared. So we've got NAS1 and we've got the usual user option. So we've got no administrator privileges or icons there to access it via a administrator. So all we can do is access files and back up the NAS. Or if you want to just access the files, which is what we're doing, you'll click the files icon and then you will see that we've got the music folder appeared. So if you recall, we set the permissions for the music folder to read and write. So all we need to do is open that folder so we can just stream and play music from our Ugreen NAS, should we so wish. So that's how easy it is to access your Ugreen NAS remotely via the Ugreen NAS official cloud option. I hope you've liked this video. hope you found it useful and keep a lookout. More videos are coming again soon. Take care. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.